folks. I just finished making this really great beer caddy. I, uh, I saw a design very similar to it at a county fair here just a few weeks back. And I thought, wow, I really would like to have one of those. But I thought it'd be more fun to build it than to uh, just shell out some money and buy it. Plus, I added uh, what I think is a pretty neat feature in my beer caddy that I haven't found in any others. And that is an integrated cooling system uh, by way of just a freezy that you put in the freezer and uh, a slot cut out in the bottom that accommodates that and keeps it from moving around. Plus, I added a nice uh, high quality stainless steel Yeti bottle opener. It takes what I think um, would be an otherwise plainish uh, beer caddy and uh, makes it kind of high end. Hey folks, if you'd like to have one of these and you don't feel like building it, I've opened up a new online store on Etsy.com and search for Jayhawk Mercantile. You can have one of these in just over a week. So hey, let me show you how to make this. So the first thing we got to do is do some layout. And I thought the best way to do this was to work with the pieces and parts that I was trying to carry around. The cooler insert and bottles of beer. So I put them on a piece of plywood, drew some straight lines, and then traced out the cooler insert, which we'll cut out with the jigsaw here in a moment. This is what uh, it works out to. A 6 and 1 8 inches by 9 and 1 8 inches rectangle. You want to cut out two of those, one of which will be the piece for the cooler insert and the other half inch piece will be a solid bottom. Okay, now that we have our two bottom pieces cut out, I'm going to go back to the piece that has the cooler insert traced on it. and I'm going to use my drill with a 7 8 inch spade bit on it to remove quite a bit of material and make way for the jigsaw. So here I am just cutting out along those trace lines with the jigsaw. We'll cut this whole piece out and we'll give it a test fit. Looks like I've got a little bit of rework to do with the saw. I'm going to mark that with my pencil, the high points there. Go back with the jigsaw, clean that up a little bit. Okay, so it looks like those adjustments have worked. That cooler insert fits just like we want it. Okay, now I'm going to use the Dremel and see that nice uh, little fence it's got on there? That ensures that the sanding drum stays at a 90 degree angle to the wood that I'm working, which results in a nice square edge all the way around there as I clean that up. Next, I'm going to fit my router with a pattern bit. See that ball bearing there at the top? I'm going to use the piece of plywood that I just cut out for the cooler insert, and I'm going to use that to replicate that exact shape just by securing that to another piece of plywood. And then I'm going to remove the majority of the material with my jigsaw. And now with that pattern bit in the router, I'm gonna route along the edges of the cooler insert piece that I just finished cutting out. But what I'm doing is I'm cutting out an identical match to that using that router with the pattern bit, really handy way to replicate intricate patterns instead of having to go through all that work with the jigsaw again. So you can see really nice and clean and an exact mat. Okay now I've changed out my router bit to a 1 8 inch radius roundover. I'm going to use that just to knock off that sharp edge around the top of our cooler insert cradle. Really cleans things up nicely. Okay now it's off to the miter saw. I'm just going to cut that uh, cooler insert cradle out and get ready to glue up the bottom. I'm using Tight Bond 2. It's great quality glue and Tight Bond 2 actually is uh, formulated to hold up well uh, in situations where there might be moisture present. And I'm kind of thinking that as that uh, cooler insert um, uh, collects condensation and it drips down into that reservoir, there could be some uh, opportunity for water to settle in there. Hey, now after the glue set up, I'm cutting that to the final width of 6 and 1 8 inches. Back to the miter saw, I'm going to make a cut for one end and then measure to cut the 9 and 1 8 inch final length of our beer caddy bottom. 
Okay, now I'm cutting out the slats for the sides. There's a larger one on the bottom, a thinner one on the top, and then I'm going to resaw them down to a quarter inch thickness each. Okay, now it's time to start working on the sides. We're gonna start with a board that's 14 inches in length, and we're gonna mark a point and cut that board to six and one eighth inches wide, which corresponds to the width of our base. And then you want to mark a point five and three quarters in inches up on both sides, and then three and a sixteenth inch in, and one and a half inches down, and mark that point. That's your center point. Now you're going to draw one and a half inch line out from each, and a three inch diameter circle around that, and then connect those points. And that is the pattern for your sides. And you're going to want to cut two of those out for each side. And also right there is the center point for your handle. You'll want to drill a 7 8 inch hole for that 3 quarter inch pipe. And I'll go ahead and drill that hole for the handle right now. So I put both pieces of wood stacked together with a scrap piece below, kind of a sacrificial piece. That ensures that uh, there won't be any tear out on the second board as that spade bit uh, comes through. Go ahead and drill that hole out. And then it's back to the miter saw. I'm going to use the miter saw to remove the majority of the material. And then I'll use the belt sander to sand down to that radius line. The trick here is to ensure that you keep that, that belt sander at 90 degrees to your work so you ensure you have a nice sharp edge all the way around. And we'll just ease that sander into that radius line end up with a nice smooth turn. And then we'll come back with the random orbit palm sander to remove any of those harsh sanding lines left by the belt sander. And this is a good opportunity for us to do a good sanding of all of our components before we start putting things together. I like to use that sponge uh, sander as well just to kind of ease the edges of things and, and make sure there's no uh, mechanical sanding marks left. Okay, let's go ahead and start putting this thing together. I'm going to use that Type Bond 2 glue again, and I'm going to squeeze out a nice bead along the edge of our bottom piece there, and I'm going to ensure good coverage just using the good old finger to spread that out. Now I'm going to put the side piece up against the bottom, and I'm going to attach it using a crown staple with my nailer. Next we're going to install some of our slats. This is the lower slat and the larger one. Just simply uh, line it up there and mark it with a pencil, cut it to length with the miter saw, more glue, and uh, just want to note that I cut that out probably about a sixteenth of an inch wider than I needed. I want to glue that uh, and nail it, and I want it to be a little bit proud on both sides so I can go back later and sand it real nice and smooth, have a real pretty finish on the ends. And now it's time to install that upper slat. We're going to use the same technique. We're going to mark it, cut it, glue it, nail it, and call her done. And then it's time to fill all those nail holes. I like using the DAP plastic wood that goes on pink and dries to a nice neutral wood color. Now it's important to note here that you do want to overfill those holes so that you're ensuring that you've got something to sand off without leaving a divot in the end. Okay, now I'm using the belt sander. We're going to sand those slats nice and smooth, sand out the putty from the nail holes, and go back with the random orbit sander with 180 grit sandpaper and make that look real nice and pretty. And now it's time to start the finishing. I'm going to rub on with a clean rag an early American stain by Minwax. It soaks in pretty quickly into this pine, but ultimately leaves a real nice kind of antique look which is exactly what I'm going for. I was real happy with the way this stain went on, absorbed into the wood, and dried real nice and evenly. Once it's dried up, I'm going to put on four coats of spray satin polyurethane. I sprayed on three fairly heavy coats and then went back and sanded with 220 grit sandpaper and sprayed on a final coat. Now let's go ahead and insert that handle, screw on one of the end caps, 
the second end cap and there's one step remaining. Let's go ahead and put that all important bottle opener on the end. Now as I said I kind of splurged here and went with the Yeti bottle opener but it is a very good quality solid hunk of stainless steel which is what I wanted. I didn't want to put something on there that may break. And with that guys we're done. So that's it. It's a fun project and certainly something that uh, I think your uh, your friends and neighbors would think it's pretty cool too. Now there's another video that I'm posting that's very similar to this, which is a small toolbox or even a toy caddy for a, a small child. Uh, I just thought this design was so simple and sleek, uh, but something you could change readily to uh, suit your needs. So why change the design too much when uh, it works great for a beer caddy, it worked great for a small toolbox as well. So take a look at that. If you knock this out, go ahead and cut the pieces out at the same time for your toolbox, and then you knock out two projects at once. So that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making it. If you uh, liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And hey, subscribe. I'm starting to uh, post videos about once every week or two, and I sure would like it if you take a look. Hopefully I'll have some good projects for you to do. If you decide to make this project, good luck to you. I know you can do a great job on it. It's not that difficult to do. And I'll see you back here next time on Doing Brew. Good luck, guys.